Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Eirik, welcome to my studio and to my YouTube channel. You are watching an excerpt, a short section of episode 5 of my Patreon exclusive series, available to my patrons who support me with $5 or more. The full length video is over 40 minutes long and full of valuable information. To see the full episode you have to go on my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash there is a link in the description below. You have to be a Patreon supporter of $5 or more in order to see the videos. Once you become a supporter, you will instantly have access to the videos. You will find the videos by clicking the post button here. The videos should appear if you have pledged $5 or more. And you can refine your search at the top of the page here. For now, sit back, relax, enjoy some royalty-free music and me sculpting the internal information of my Half-Life Size Sculpture. Let me start off by mentioning something that perhaps I've talked about before. Everything I do is to set myself up for the next step, with built-in tolerances for mistakes in the previous stages that I can fix and improve upon slowly while progressing my piece. The areas you've seen me point out here are areas where I have too much depth. These areas need to be filled in with clay. To begin with, I don't want to do that because it takes away from my ability to edit the internal information and move things around until they all fit together. Big gaps between forms means I can move the forms around a lot easier. Now that I feel comfortable with the general placement of all my forms, I can fill the gaps in between them somewhat. We are not really working on the transitions here, however. While we are considering the transitions, we don't want to get too close to the surface just yet. This is not about the value of our transition, this is all about the shape design. The internal information needs to be pleasing to the eye, so it needs to be designed well. The shapes must look good and work nicely and fit nicely together. With big gaps between all my shapes, I can't do this properly. In order to accurately assess what I've done up to this point and then improve upon the shape design, I need a canvas to draw these shapes on. Where those big gaps are, that's where the edges of my shapes eventually will end up being. And so to get accurate and good shape design, I must fill those gaps somewhat and then readdress every shape I've already sculpted and perhaps adjust and add more in some places as well. There are some things that I'd like to talk about here today on this episode that we've already kind of dealt with, or dealt with at least a little bit in previous episodes, but I think they're important to mention here because they play a huge part in uh, as far as in internal information goes. As you've probably noticed, there's a lot of overlaps in terms of the subject of these episodes. The process is somewhat fluid and doesn't follow these episodes in exact fashion. Which is why it's important you watch all of the episode in order to get the whole picture. Now I'm trying to keep it as linear as possible, but there will still be some fluidity to the way that the process goes. So we'll circle back to finding the internal information in the first place. And a lot of that has, of course, already happened. It happens by necessity during contour building. If we do not relate our contours to the internal information properly, we end up with contours in the wrong place in space. Which of course means that we, we will need to remove clay, which we don't want to do. Contours are internal information from a different view. Contours from the front view are internal information from the side view, and so on. So we cannot separate building contours and finding internal information completely. They need to happen together and work together and correspond with each other. As the contours become more substantial, we begin drawing the internal information. First, we draw it on, then we reinforce the drawing with clay. Finally, once we turn the sculpture and the internal information from the front view, for example, becomes contours from the side view, 
We expand the borders of what once was internal information, because now that it is contour, we can easily judge its direction, the angle breaks that make up the internal information, or the contour now, and its relationship with our established truths, which are our bony points. Remember, we cannot and should not try to judge depth, especially not in areas where we can turn depth easily into right and left, simply by turning our sculpture and switching to a different view. Let's take a quick second to talk about some updates that's been made to my Patreon page. I've just started putting out exclusive Patreon content, videos that you will only have access to if you are my supporter on Patreon. The first series we have embarked on is the Beginner's Guide to Figure Sculpture, where we will cover how to sculpt a standing nude female figure in Contraposto, in half life size scale. I will cover everything from the armature, the sculpting, and eventually the mold making. This will be your one stop for all the answers you'll need for sculpting a standing nude figure. Whether you sculpt from life or from photo reference, we will cover how to work from both. One video will be released on the first Thursday of every month. The video will be longer than what you're used to seeing here, at around 35 to 45 minutes long. It will all be real-time footage, no time lapses, and I will do my best to use a very linear process with clearly defined steps, making it both easy to follow and a little bit easier to do on your own. Any patron pledging $5 or more will get access to the videos. I'm excited to finally be putting out exclusive Patreon content to my patrons whose support is greatly appreciated. So check out my Patreon page to watch the full video by clicking the link in the description below. Because we want our contours to be flexible, we should work to ensure that they can easily move in and out. We begin establishing the internal information only in areas we trust our heights in. And we begin establishing the internal information close to the center line and then working outwards. In an ideal world, we would set up our center line and it would become one of our established truths that we do not change or mess with. Of course, this sometimes doesn't work out, sometimes we need to adjust the center line, but ideally we shouldn't need to, and it becomes very hard to progress without treating it, I think, as an established truth. With the center line established in a way that we can trust, we can now develop internal information close to the center line. As I said, this always begins with drawing, then we add clay to reinforce the drawing. The contours should be flexible, they can move. Widths should always be treated as a more flexible element than, than heights. Heights are much more harder to change, which is one of the reasons I spent a lot of time and effort in the beginning making sure my heights were set up very well. Minor adjustments might be needed, probably will be needed, but if I set them up using my bony points, which we discussed in episode 1, then I should have gotten my heights pretty damn close, close enough to where changes will be minuscule rather than sweeping. Let me quickly return to what is actually happening on the screen here before we continue on. Filling up of the gaps between the forms is done in conjunction with adjusting the shape and the size of every form. As the gaps are filled, we begin closing in on a likeness to our model. If the previous step was set up and done poorly, and the shapes had little to no correlation with my model, then filling the gaps in between the forms would only bring my sculpture further away from my model, meaning they won't look alike, making comparison between the two in order to find the differences between the two very difficult.
Every step builds upon the next, and while the shapes are simplified before I begin filling in the gaps between them, they are not so simplified that they bear no resemblance to, to my model. However, simply filling in the gaps gets me exactly as far as my limited ability to compare sculpture to model at an early stage when there's little resemblance to compare. In other words, it won't get me very far. The results will be poor and lack in complexity. The sculpture will be simple and, and boring. So while filling the gaps, I continue to adjust the shapes. Comparing becomes easier and easier, and I'm looking for differences between my model and my sculpture. Never look for similarities. You'll find plenty of those if you look, but those are not things that you'll need in order to improve your piece. You need to see the differences and make the changes needed in order to rectify those differences. I'm not only considering likeness, however, I'm also considering the design of my shapes. Now we'll get back to shape design a little bit later on. If you enjoyed the video and want to learn sculpture from me, check out my Patreon page. I give feedback and critiques on people's work and we talk about whatever you need help with in your sculpting endeavors. And right now there is exclusive sculpting video content on my Patreon. The first series we have embarked on is the beginner's guide to figure sculpture. I'm super excited to finally be creating exclusive content for Patreon and hope you will be too and will take a look. The link to my Patreon page is in the description below. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for a new video next Thursday. Hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever a new video comes out. If you enjoyed the video, click the like button and share with your friends and family. It really helps me out a lot. Thank you for watching, stay creative, and I hope to see you in the next one.